Welcome to a tutorial on Twine. In this video, I'm going to cover the action macro as part of Harlow 3.3. We've been looking across many different videos at changer macros. These are macros within Harlow that change something. We can change the style, we can change the size, we can change rotation, and all kinds of different things. However, there are some cases where we want a change to come about due to the user or player doing something. This isn't quite working with data and input. This is working with a change that comes about as a result of some action. In fact, the action macro is defined around that idea. The user or player does something, and we'll look at those here in just a moment, and then it, change happens as a result. Again, we're not necessarily getting data, although we could, and we're not necessarily getting input somehow, although we could, we are changing as a result of some type of action. The actions I am discussing here have to do with the cursor within the web page and its movement. Are we interested in the mouse going over something? So the cursor going over something, the mouse going out of something, so over something, and then once it moves away, doing something, allowing a double click or allowing a single click. Most of the time when we work with links within Harlow or macros that produce links within Harlow, we're interested in clicks. In fact, we've been doing that across a large number of videos now. Anytime we're clicking on a link or clicking on something else, that's kind of the default action that takes place. But if we want to change this action to the other three available to us, mouse over, mouse out, and a double click, we can. In fact, we can use this macro along with a link or anything that produces a link. So let me show you what I mean. So here I have action mouse over with example one. Notice this is a link, very traditional looking link within Twine. But I've got right here action mouse over connected to this link and so it applies to this link or as I'll show in the next passage anything that produces a link. So let's go ahead and play the story from here. We build and play. We have a link, but it doesn't work the way we think it will. So let's note this thing at the bottom before I interact with the action macro. When the action changes, so too does the visual change. It will be a dash line for mouse over. So traditionally, when we see a link within Twine, we're looking at a underline effect. And this is the visual represent representation of the link. If it's a mouse over, it looks different. In fact, this is mouse over. So as soon as my cursor, my mouse, enters this area, it's going to change. Boom, and now we've refreshed back here. And in fact, I can cause this to refresh over and over by moving my cursor over mouse over, and then we will just keep reloading every time, which is potentially very distracting. <laughs> but that's mouse over. So we can change the corresponding user or player action and create a different change. This is part of the changer macros. It's not necessarily part of user and input macros. So we're producing some type of change affecting a link, which is relying on some type of action, mouse over, mouse out. So we can use a link, as I've shown. We can also use anything that produces a link, which opens up much more, many more possibilities. So. What if instead we did something like this, which is a little bit strange. We're saying create a link called mouse out and comma action mouse out and then the hook it corresponds to. So we're saying create a link, but for the action for the link, instead of the default click, make it mouse out instead. Let's look at this. So if we go to start story from here and build and play, Notice there's also another visual change, something Harlow does very well. It's highly recommended when communicating to users and players that the default action has changed as it also has a change in visual appearance. We saw that normally when we have a link, it's underlined. If we have mouse over, it's dotted. If we have mouse out, you'll see a kind of box or border around it. So mouse out works a little different. As long as I'm within here, nothing changes, but as soon as I'm out, Boom, see. But notice over here in example two, this corresponded to a hook, which opens up the possibility of doing other things in response to this action. 
So potentially anything else that we have seen as we've used other changer macros and even other macros within Harlow could be within this hook and could run as a response to a corresponding action. This opens up the door to us using other actions, mouse out, mouse over, and double click, instead of clicking. Keeping in mind, of course, that the visual change will clue the user or player that something might be a little different, which is good. Letting them know how they interact with a story is incredibly important. But, as introduced in this video, the action macro paired with mouse out, mouse over, or double click allows us to change the default action away from a click to some other action and allows us to pair that with either a link, as we saw in example one right here, or anything that produces a link, such as the link macros and its number of other sister macros, things like link rerun and other macros. So this opens up the door for us changing links. We can change what the action is that a user or player would do, mouse over, mouse out, or double click. Lots of new ideas as we think about changing changers, applying to links in our interactions as part of the action macro, all within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.